Greetings. My name is Aurelio Voltaire, and most of you probably know me as a touring musician and a re oh, oh, sorry. My name's Aurelio Voltaire, and this handsome, desiccated fellow to my left here is my co-host, Mr. Orville Dedenbacher. Now, most of you probably know me as a touring musician and a recording artist, but I'm also the author of a book called Painted Black, A Guide to Gothic Homemaking. In this book, I demonstrated how to take normal, mundane, easy to find objects and turn them into macabre objects du out. I showed how to take a normal sketchbook and turn it into a dusky tome one might find in Edgar Allan Poe's grave. I showed how to make creepy picture frames. There was even a recipe for a ghoulish graveyard cake. Anyway, mostly what I did in Paint It Black was take a tiny little New York City apartment and turn it into a gothic lair befitting a dark soul like Orville or myself or you. And we're sitting in that space right this very moment. When I first walked in here, this was just a tiny little white box. And look at it now! Why are you even here? Seriously, can you tell me that? Oh, yeah, no, that's true actually. <laughs> Anyway, I should tell you, this place is really, really tiny. Uh, when viewers of my vlog series, The Lair of Voltaire, write in, they say, show us the rest of the lair, give us a tour of the lair, turn the camera around. I'm silently thinking to myself, this is the whole lair, there's nothing else to see. And believe me when I say that when I have company, it is very demoralizing to hear those words no man ever wants to hear. Oh, hey, thanks for coming. So small. Wow, it's tiny. Never seen one quite this small. <laughs> Where's the beef? Where's the beef? Well, Eventually, I got married and I moved out of here and I ended up using this place as a storage unit for all of my band merchandise. I would go on tour and when I came back, I would just empty my bag into this place. Hundreds of CDs and t-shirts and key pendants and plush toys from China. It was just a disaster. It really was. It looked like, it looked like a hurricane had hit a flea market during an episode of Hoarders. It was a mess. <laughs> Well, in any case, I eventually got divorced, and then I had to move back in here. And that was truly traumatizing. This place was a disaster. There were floor-to-ceiling boxes, clutter everywhere. You couldn't even see the floor. It was demoralizing. Demoralizing to be in my own home. I would go on tour, and I would stay in nice hotels. Or because I didn't want to be here, I would do little staycations in hotels in New York City, just to get out of here. But. During one of those little staycations, I had something of a revelation. Take a look. This is the 60 Hotel on Allen Street in New York City's Lower East Side. It is one of my favorite places to escape to when I want to get away from home, but not necessarily leave town. It's dark, it's sleek, 
It's really truly a lovely example of postmodern minimalistic gothic chic. Take a look. Now, when I say gothic, I don't mean it brings to mind images of Tim Burton riding a skeleton horse through a graveyard. This is truly an updated, industrial, minimalistic take with a great preponderance of every goth's favorite color, black. The entire bathroom is black, covered in this cool black stone, giving it the feel of a mausoleum. It is truly the perfect crypt for a gothic soul to... Dark gods! Orville, what are you doing in here? How'd you get in here anyway? You know what? Let, let's just give him some privacy. I don't really want to know what comes out of Orville Dettenbacher. I'm guessing it's dust. Behind these wooden doors, everything is black. The closets are black, the hangers are black. The mini bar's black, the drawers are black, the safe is black. Even the iron is black. I love this place. It's so nice to get away. So nice to get away from home, from that awful, cluttered, tiny little... And that's when it hit me. Wait a minute. This place is no bigger than my apartment. In fact, it might even be smaller. And so, I measured it. And that's when I discovered that this room that I love so much is the exact same dimensions as the Lair of Voltaire. It's just so much nicer. The floors are a sleek black. The ceilings don't look like they're gonna cave in on you. The walls have a fresh coat of paint. The bottom line is, my apartment's never ever gonna get any bigger. I've accepted that. But that doesn't mean it can't get nicer. And hell, if it was half as nice as this room right here, I'd actually want to be at home. Oh, oh really? Oh, don't come home? Oh, should I stop paying rent too? If I don't pay rent, you'd have to go back to that garbage can I found you in. It had soiled diapers and rotten sandwiches in it. Oh really? Oh really? Well, what about the sandwiches? Anyway, that's when I completely decide... It said recycling on the side. Anyway, that is when I decided that I would reclaim this space and make it a home, a place that I'd want to actually live in. But in order to do that, I needed to get all of the clutter out. And to that end, I got a storage unit down the street. I can hear you, you know. In any case, to horrify you non-New Yorkers, this is my storage unit. My storage unit is 10 feet by 9 feet by 5 feet, and it's a steal at only $400 a month. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what some of you pay for a three-story house somewhere. Uh, now, to horrify you further, are you ready for this? The Lair of Voltaire, not counting a small bathroom and a small kitchen, is a whopping, enormous, gargantuan 10 feet by 11 feet. Yeah, it's huge and are you ready for this market value for this apartment in the East Village of New York is between you better brace yourselves two thousand and two thousand five hundred dollars a month <laughs> did you know <laughs> All right, well, to be fair, the lair used to be a garbage can, but we're gonna change all of that. We're gonna reclaim this place. We're gonna make it a home again, and we're going to make it a true gothic lair. And now that all of the clutter's in storage, we're gonna take the first step, and that is to give it a fresh lick of paint. Let me show you something. I've been painting apartments red for decades. Why red? It's passionate, it's sexy, it's the color of blood. But more importantly, it's about one of the only colors goths actually like. <laughs> now, you're probably wondering, 
Why not paint the lair black? That's every goth's favorite color. Ah, but the problem with black is that it makes a place look smaller. And the last thing you want in a space like this is to make it look even smaller. So inspired by some of the boutique hotels in which I've stayed here in New York City, we are going to upgrade this look. We're gonna paint this place another color goths love, light black, otherwise known as gray. But first, we're gonna need some wine. Well, no, but it certainly doesn't hurt. Anyway, I'm not gonna be the one doing the painting. I'm gonna pull a Tom Sawyer and I'm gonna get some of my sexy goth friends to paint this place for me. And while they do that, I'm gonna demonstrate a project from Painted Black, A Guide to Gothic Homemaking. I'm gonna show you how to make a gothic bottle candelabra. The first step, of course, is you have to buy some bottles of wine. And it certainly doesn't hurt if you find the ones with the spookiest labels. I selected these, Werewolf, Besieged, and Apothic Red. Well, the second step, of course, is we have to empty these wine bottles, one of my favorite things to do. There's only one proper way to do that. Let's get some glasses. I'm gonna drink out of this. This is my new favorite glass. It's called Dracula's Cup, and it's by Alchemy Gothic. They're the fine folks who make my key pendant, as well as the unicorn medals. Now, this glass seems really dainty, but let me tell you, it's quite heavy. It's got a, quite a lot of substance. And it's got these little droplets of red blood, which are actually Swarovski crystals. And they pool in these little puddles of red enamel down here. Now, as for Orville, you're going to drink out of this. This is also by Alchemy Gothic. It's called Turpin's Gallows Tanker. It's a tanker for a manly man like you. And look, it's even got a little dead guy hanging from it. Anyway, let's just get to drinking, shall we? Antonio, ¿qué tal? Bien. Mira, las pinturas y los crochets están ahí en la cocina. Ok, gracias. Oh, that's just Antonio. You see, red is really, really hard to paint over, so before you can paint over red, you need to have a really nice, opaque coat of white. And I couldn't find any goths willing to paint this place white, so I called him. No, he's definitely not gothic, <laughs> but he is a werewolf. I'm serious. Antonio, aren't you a werewolf? Si, senor. Soy hombre lobo. Told ya. Ooh, let's toast to Antonio with the werewolf wine. Antonio, we're gonna toast to you. No joda. He is too a werewolf, I'm telling you. Antonio, we're gonna toast to you and all of your furry brethren. Come on, come tell this desiccated ball sack what's up. <laughs> I just thought of something. No. It's gonna take us quite a while to drink all of this wine. Luckily, I've got some empty wine bottles somewhere, so follow me and I'll show you how to make a gothic bottle candelabra while Orville gets wasted. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a spooky, simple wine bottle candelabra. Now, nothing says gothic like cascading flows of candle wax. It brings to mind candles burning endlessly in some Transylvanian castle. Just look at this exquisite candelabra dripping wax into the fountain of Bar Sinister, Los Angeles' premier goth club. Today we're going to make something like that for the lair, and you can make one for yourself at home as well. 
It all starts out with a bottle of wine, and I think Orville and I have already shown you how to empty a bottle. Right, Orville? Whoa, you better slow down, partner. You're gonna get dehydrated. <laughs> If you picked out a wine bottle with a particularly spooky label and you want to preserve that label, you should cover it with some of this blue painting masking tape. Just put it over the label and with an X-Acto knife cut off the excess. The next step is to take your bottle outside and paint it with Krylon Ultra Flat Black Spray Paint. And believe me when I say you do want to do this outside. Once you're done, if you preserve the label, gingerly peel off the blue masking tape. Or if you're like me and you're going to use a sticker, Grab yourself some spooky stickers, I generally design my own, and just attach it to the front of the bottle like that. Another idea is to cut pictures out of a magazine. Maybe amass a collection of photos of Johnny Depp in each Tim Burton film he starred in and put each photo on its own bottle. I'm not gonna lie, I'd probably buy that candelabra. Now, if you're using stickers, obviously they'll stick directly to the bottle themselves. If you're using photos out of a magazine, you'll want to spray them on with a spray adhesive. I like 3M Super 77. Just spray the photo, stick it onto the bottle. Now, at that point, you're going to want to get yourself some candles. I get my candles at this really cool witchcraft shop in New York City called Enchantments. Next, just heat up the bottom of the candle to get it nice and gooey and stick it onto your bottle. Now you just light the candle and let nature do the rest. In time, you'll end up with something like this. Now, they're great all by themselves, but glue a bunch of them together and you've got yourself a spooky wine bottle candelabra. Try it at home. Send me photos. I'd love to see what you come up with. Well, Antonio the werewolf has finished painting this place white, and Orville and I are still trying to empty all of these wine bottles. I think it might be time to call in reinforcements. Hey Mark! Hey, what's going on mate? So, why am I spinning this tiny little kitchen? So for all this extra wine. Oh, alright, fair enough mate.
look at them. They look so happy. <laughs> it warms my little black heart. Uh, hey, hand over some of that wine. Orville. Orville. Orville? Orville. Pathetic. <laughs> This episode was sponsored by Alchemy Gothic and made possible through the generosity of Courtney Nawara, Loreto Calderon, and Sandra Mahler. <laughs>